Hello. So my vlog today is going to be my June favorites. So uh, I guess let's start off with some clothing. Um, so there's this store in Canada where I'm from. Um, I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, and it's called Northern Reflections. And it's kind of, um, it's geared towards elderly people. Um, but I kind of like, I like it's good quality. It's cotton. And, um, you know, I was kind of finding that for a cotton t-shirt at Walmart, you were spending $12 or for a quality cotton t-shirt, you could spend like 16 to 20 with Northern Reflection. So, um, this one has butterflies on it. I really enjoy it. I like butter butterflies a lot. So, um, and I liked the color too. It was like a nice, it's a nice sharp pink. Um, then I also got this one, this purple one from Northern Reflections. Uh, just a solid purple and um, fits good. They're nice additions to have. Um, I also did some thrifting. So I usually don't go to the skirt section of the thrift store. So I'm glad that I did because I found, um, actually found three black skirts, but I'm only put, featuring two because I've only really worn these two. Um, so there's this one, it's a long black skirt with a slit in the back. Just a short little slit in the back. It's very figure fitting and um, it was like, you know, five to seven bucks. And then this one is a little bit more tight on top or around the bottom and then flares out more. It's a skirt as well. It's kind of, it's almost like Western style. It's got kind of like a, um, a suede pleating. Uh, it's interesting. And I really enjoy this one too. So I've been wearing these in June. And um, let's discuss skincare a little bit. So um, I've kind of been on a journey with finding a new face wash. And I even went through a phase where I was washing my face with honey. But um, the honey tends to get in my hairline and make it all greasy looking so the honey actually was very nice for my skin so I could I would recommend like a honey mask if anyone was interested in doing that but um practically it would run down my arms and like get on the sink and make the sink sticky and around my hair so I just I stopped and I had this um this bar of soap uh from CeraVe their bar soap um and I'd used it and was found some success with it, like I was enjoying it. So I had to stop the honey. And this is really the only thing I had that I knew didn't irritate my skin. And so I started using it and I've been using it for probably about three weeks now. And my skin is clearer than ever. And um, yeah, if, I, I really like it's like it leaves your skin afterwards feeling tight but not tight in like the bad way it's more like clean and um but also soft and moisturized because there's moisturizer in it so um yeah I've definitely been enjoying the Cetaphil bar soap and then there's also this though the snail cream now I know I'm obviously a little late to the bandwagon with the snail cream, but I I bought it around Christmas time, so about six months ago, and I tried it for a day or two and didn't really see any results, so I just dropped it for six months. But it's been sitting in my medicine cabinet just waiting for another chance. So I figured I was gonna do it this, this June, like I, I gave it a try this June. And the overall just improvement and clarity um, in my skin. I just um, wash my face with the soap, rinse it, 
and then just apply this onto wet skin. And I don't apply another moisturizer or anything after. I know that you're supposed to because it's a humectant or, or something like all this stuff about humectants and occlusives. It can get a little confusing. So I know you're supposed to put a moisturizer on top of the snail cream, but I actually only just use the snail cream. And I've been waking up with skin clearer than ever and brighter and fading of... And I had like a little... Um, like a scratch that like would not go away and it's tightening and healing so um, I really I'm a huge fan of this and for some reason I look forward to my skincare routine when I get to put the snail stuff on because it's just so it's such like an indulgent beauty ritual to put snail cream on your face you know so I really, I really enjoy using that. Um, another thing I, I only bought recently, so I'm kind of just sneaking it in at the end of the month, but I do enjoy it. It's this CoverGirl um, Clean Fresh. This one, I bought it in like the darkest color because everyone was saying it was a dupe for um, Clinique Black Honey, uh, but I didn't love the way it looked on me whereas so I but I enjoyed the feeling of it on my lips but I just didn't love the dark on me so um I thought I'd give it another try in a different color so this one's called made for peach and I'm wearing it right now and it's like perfect nude and um just kind of if you want to put something on that that kind of brings everything together the look together um I love it and you can also wear it with a lip liner um, so uh, this was a good purchase I'm gonna slip it in and then there's also this I got a few months ago but I've been really using it quite uh, frequently during June um, in particular I'm using this this color here you can see it's kind of got more I don't know if you can see, but it's got like a finger indentation on this one. That's the one I'm wearing today. And this is the one that I wear most days. It's just an every a good everyday look. And I apply it. The important thing is that I apply it with my finger. I was with Wet n Wild and with, in fact, all eyeshadows, I was kind of experiencing fallout when I was using a brush. And so I recently saw, noticed that um, one of my favorite beauty vloggers applied her eyeshadow with her finger and it's it just goes on smoother. You have more control. You're not kicking up dust and crumble. So that's a tip is applying with your finger, like your pinky. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, or have been, you know, using, doing that. And then there's, uh, of course, my hobbies is, one of my hobbies is crystals. I really enjoy crystals. So I bought two more for my collection. This one is called St Sandstone. Sandstone. And then this one is Selenite. I think it's Selenite. It's kind of crystal iridescent. You can see through it. It's really like a, I really like this one. And it's also for, um, you use this one to charge or cleanse energy or rooms or other crystals. So I enjoy the selenite. And then um, I guess lifestyle or like some of the things I've been enjoying is on Tuesdays, I have Tuesdays off from work. So I like to go to the movies on Tuesdays. And um, I saw The Little Mermaid and, you know, I was really impressed. It was very faithful to the original and some people say too faithful to the original. And a lot of people had some criticism about Lin-Manuel Miranda writing that rap song Scuttlebutt. But I thought Scuttlebutt was totally endearing, cute. I mean... 
the idea scuttle is supposed to be an annoying seagull that's what he was in the original little mermaid so the fact that he's playing an annoying seagull in the live action version is true to character so i'm not quite sure why everyone's upset about scuttle singing with a squawky voice and rapping and all that but that's that's kind of the scuttlebutt that i heard about scuttlebutt and um i give it like uh, the the little mermaid i give it a solid nine yes it might have been a little dark but the visuals were bright vivid imaginative colorful like they really how i don't see how somebody could really complain about that they served they served it up and um the prince and ariel were both so charming in their characters and so you know they had the love story where they were fixated on each other and um, nothing else would do and it was really engrossing and endearing and um i think you're a cynic if if you really had anything that bad to say about this new the little mermaid i thought it was great and um so i've been inspired to wear this necklace a lot from the little mermaid it's got pearls and gems like amethyst and i don't know what else is in here but i love bead necklaces so i have a collection i'm collecting my bead necklaces and um, this one's very mermaidy, so I like that. And then uh, for books, I listened to an audiobook. I listened to it was it's like a I, I really like self help and production or like productive self help books. So I listened to the one called Eat That Frog. I want to say it's by Brian Tracy, but I think Brian Tracy writes a different one. But Eat That Frog, it's just this concept of getting the most important thing done. And so the best way to break down the book and describe it is that essentially he, he advises you to write a to-do list and then to go through the to-do list and grade it. A, B, C, D, etc. on how important it is. Like if I don't get it done, will there be a penalty or a consequence? And if I do get it done, will there be a significant reward? And um, you go through it and you grade it A, B, C. And then, and you can have more than one A or B, etc. And then you go through the A's and rate them. How important are the A's? One, two, three. And so once you have your list all categorized, then you go to 1A. And that's the frog, essentially. You eat the frog, you do the most important one. And um, it's really focusing on figuring out what's what adds value and not wasting your time. So I did derive a little bit of um, self-help from it. So it's pretty short. Um, I can't, it's hard to say whether or not you need that kind of advice because it could be just considered common sense as well, but I'm, I enjoyed it and I'm glad I listened to it. So, uh, I guess that's more or less a roundup of the things I've been enjoying in June. So, uh, let me know what you've been up to and, um, I hope to see you in the comments. Okay. Peace.